Welcome to my thoughts on the 1990s animated X-Men show, Season 3, Episodes 2 and 3, called Out of the Past Part 2, and The Phoenix Saga Part 1, Sacrifice. So, spoilers for these two episodes, all the episodes leading up to them, another two episodes I love. In the description box, there's a link to donate to the SAG-AFTRA strikers. Please make sure you do so. There's also links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And, yeah, with that said, let's dive right in. Out of the Past, Part 2. So, yeah, we get our... We get a really good look at the alien that was, you know, impl like, we knew by the end of the first part... Okay, there's definitely an alien in there, and it's about to emerge. And, yeah, it's very, very cool. Like, it reminds me... I forget the name, but I, I swear, I used to actually know the names of all these, but the that one Doom creature that's like... The, the video game Doom, the, that's like flying... A flying bowl, only here it's like neon. Green neon, and it has legs, you know, but, but yeah... Let's see, and yeah, we see that, you know, Lady Deathstrike has no empathy for the the Reavers, or, you know, anyone, really. She's really a, a shell of her former self. And the victims, the, the people that the alien, like, takes the minds of plead for mercy, and, like, at first, we don't quite know... Is this them fighting to the surface, or is it the creature, you know, and, and yeah, later we realize, yeah, that's the creature doing psychological warfare, you know, it knows that it can, you know, mess with the, the, its enemies by having the, the, the people that they care about plead for, for mercy, just, yeah, really, really messed up. You know, it's, it's one of the most evil beings that they've encountered uh, so far on the show. And, uh, yeah, Xavier and Beast get into the, uh, what's it called, into the ship. And, you know, trying to figure out what is the, what do these weird symbols mean. And, uh, you know, Beast points out, you know, oh, my, my kingdom for a Rosetta Stone. Which, you know, I, I think he means, like, you know, the, the, some kind of technology to translate. I mean, if, if you just, if you want a Rosetta Stone in, like, filmography form, just, you know, go for Michael Haneke. And, seriously, if you don't know, like, he's done movies in so many different languages. It's, it's super cool. Anyway. Yeah, and, and the... Yeah, we, we, you know, it becomes clear this was a prison ship, you know, they were meant to, the ship was meant to contain this creature, and now it's loose. Which is pretty cool, because it is, you know, it's one of those things, you know, the, the, that is a theory about, is it a spoiler to say... The 1982 The Thing opens with a spaceship crashing. And there are theories that the spaceship was to, you know, meant to transport a creature. And the creature got loose and that's why it crashed. So, you know, yeah, here it actually is that. And, yeah, they point out, you know, if they don't get the, the people out of the, the creature soon, it may be too late. And, yeah, they do manage to, to rescue them, and, you know, Lady Death Strikes, you know, <laughs> still planning my funeral. You know, you, I owe you my life today, but when I'm strong enough, you will see me again. And... You know, and it's one of those things where, like, you can kind of understand, like, it's, why do the X-Men not, like, I don't know, try to capture her or something, but then, like, 
what prison could hold her, and are they really gonna, like, kidnap someone who isn't currently fighting them, kind of thing, you know, so. And we learn that the Reavers escaped, which makes a lot of sense, because they were, you know, when they managed to stop the creature, they were pretty far away from the ship, and that's where the Reavers were taken over, so, you know, and obviously they're not gonna stick around. And, yeah, Xavier says, I fear this is only the beginning, and the camera goes up to the, the you know, ah, what's it called? The, um, the, like, space, and it says, the Phoenix Saga, which, you know, like, just music to the ears of all X-Men comic fans at the time, you know, and, yeah, very, very cool. X-Men go cosmic. And that brings us to Season 3, Episode 3, The Phoenix Saga, Part 1, Sacrifice. I mean, Sacrifice. And, yeah, so Lilandra apparently, like, intentionally gives Xavier a vision, and he keeps his, you know, he's playing with his cards pretty close to the, the chest, is that what they're saying? And, yeah, so they're going to have to get on the shuttle, and we see them breaking into the base. So, basically, like, season one, it's very frequently, like, mutants versus other mutants. And we kind of, we learn what mutants are and why some of them choose evil. Season two, you know, a chunk of it is, like, Friends of Humanity. And season three, it's aliens. Yeah, very, very cool. It's just I, I really appreciate how they gradually expand the the universe, and yeah, we meet Eric the Red, who makes a very strong entrance. Like, you know, if you want to establish a character as badass, have their entrance be that they easily take out a bunch of people that we know are super strong. And he's going to, you know, send the X-Men out through the airlock. Just, yeah, very, very intense. And... <laughs> it looks like there's a barbecue, and we're the main course. And, yeah, Jean realizes there is no other way but for her to sacrifice herself. You know, I... I think they maybe do a better job explaining why she has to sacrifice herself here than in a certain movie that tries to do the same thing, but I'm not... I do think they at least made an effort in that movie as well, and it works out okay. It's just, you can very much tell that they really wanted to get to that, where here, like, yeah, like, what else is gonna, you know, she can't let this, you know, um, Corbo, I think his name is, she can't let him do it, you know, she has the, the, you know, she gets the information on how to do it from his mind, just, it's, yeah, and, you know, Wolverine, you know, says Jean, and she's like, don't try to stop me, and he's like, I wouldn't, I just want to wish you good luck, you know, because, you know, and uh, he makes that kind of choice himself. You know, he self-sacrifices whenever that's the the kind of thing that is going to, you know, fix a situation. When, when it's necessary, he's willing to, to do that as well. So he completely understands, and he actually supports her decision. He's one of the only ones to, like, he's the only one to, like, vocally support her decision there. Um, let's see, I don't have a lot more to say about these two episodes. I appreciate the detail that when, like, the tele telepathic control thing, when that wears off and Corbo sees all these, all the X-Men, the one he recognizes is Beast, because, you know, and, and he doesn't know him as Beast, he knows him as Dr. McCoy, you know, because he's, you know, everybody knows Dr. McCoy, he, you know, he helped cure a, a blind woman. There's all this, you know, he's he's a famous scientist. So just, just a neat little bit of continuity that, 
you know, this astronaut, of course he knows this other, you know, incredible genius. So just, yeah, you know, whereas the, the X-Men are not, like, super well-known in-universe. The, the, they try to, you know, stay relatively hidden when, when they can. Uh, right, I, I thought they did a really good job making it super impactful the first time they encounter an alien, you know, and this first, like, out of the past part two, it is just one alien, you know. So it's like, okay, you ready? You you okay with there being aliens in, in X-Men the Animated Series? Good, because there's going to be a lot now, you know. The, the very next episode, it's like intergalactic war, you know, just, yeah. And I thought they did a good job. You know, as as usual, we have some great character moments. Let's see. Poor Jubilee just has to let herself get captured and then freed. As uh, you know, like you can you can understand why the you know they need someone to get captured, and she is not the most necessary for the, you know, but it still sucks for her. I think that is about it. Yeah, you know, another two excellent episodes. Really, really loving, you know, really glad we got to the, the Phoenix Saga. And, yeah, um, catch you tomorrow. Make my marvel.